Yeah. 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 And it is just a quick housekeeping item. Line 418, the motion to a point was not unanimous, so we need to put it in the against, I believe, or I don't know what the so, is, but that's not correct. No. As written, we can just vote unanimous. Yeah, it yeah. needs to be. It should just say in favor. It, it was it was four to one. And yep, no, it was four to one. one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, folks, once again, could you tell us who you are? Well, we can start with the next. That's fine. Um, let's finish this, and then we'll go around and and so yeah. I'll take it off both of those. Yeah, it was. I, no, like I said, it's a template. It's a housekeeping mm -hmm. item. So, thank you. So that's my motion to. Approve with us to the corrections to line 418 and then is it three lines down? I'll second that motion. 421. I have a feeling. Like in or around lines 411 and 412, I did ask if we had to choose the numbers tonight, but then there was also a comment from Mr. Kiley that they could, they didn't have to have all five members see, to continue, and I think that's important to the discussion. Dan had indicated that they had been running with right. her fall asleep. Yep. Yeah. It, it is important to the discussion. Yeah. Correct. I'd add that into my motion. Thank you. And I will second the amended motion. Okay. So, further discussion or comments on the minutes as amended? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The minutes are approved. All right. And why don't we just go real quick and just say our names? You want to start for the audience? Yeah. Well, we can start with UK. We'll go around and we'll finish the staff. Okay. I'm Kate Plumley Stewart. I'm a select board member. Mm -hmm. Tracy Young. John Plume. Eric Russell. Alice Kennedy. And we've got staff. Elisa Bonnet. Ed okay. Morris, town manager. Uh, Whitney Banker, recording secretary. Okay. Thank you. Um, and. As always, when you, when you do make comments, please uh, say your names for a minute taker. He does a wonderful job. But, uh, we often does not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, board reports. I have nothing new from last time. Nobody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm in the same boat. Um, select uh, the <laughs> sorry. Um, the conservation commission will meet on October third next. Okay. Tracy? Energy hasn't met since our last board meeting. We were all at the budget <laughs> meeting. Yes. And, and I thought it went quite well. And uh, we made particular attention to the town manager's uh, suggestions. I thought those um, were really well written up. Thank you. It was a good consolidation of all of our ideas. And it's yeah. nice to have it not only in writing, but to be there and show that we are all on the same page. Yeah, and I think there was a, a deep consensus that uh, um, it's important that we maintain the level of services, that we maintain the education uh, and salary of our employees, but we do not wish to undertake big, new, expensive projects. Mm -hmm. oh, and 
planning did have a very good meeting. However, the results of that meeting are on our agenda, so I won't belabor it twice. Yep. All right, town manager's report. All right, um, I got a short report tonight too. Um, staff report remains the same. We're down one groundskeeper position. The person that we did make an offer to, I believe, has decided not to take the position. So Jim and Jeremy are having some discussions about exactly how they want to bring somebody on. And we're looking at Nicolette and the good job she's done since Rick left and maybe moving some things around. So they're they're trying to make some final plan of that and how and when they want to bring someone on for that position. So okay. that'll remain open for a little bit, but we will be looking to fill that position sometime. Um, Whitney Hall and public safety buildings continue to move along well. Um, Whitney Hall is making good progress. Drywall and door frames are all complete on the first two levels and painting has begun. We're probably almost halfway through the painting process of those two floors. They've got everything framed up upstairs and they're starting drywall this week up in that area. So it's moving into the final phases. Um, I have just a question. Go ahead. Piles of dirt are on each end of Alice's trench. Yeah, we're now we're now calling it Alice's Trench, by the way. Um, oh no! Is Liberty Utilities holding us up? No, they're they've been they finished some final grading today. I think on Wednesday we're probably going to be removing those piles of dirt. Liberty is setting a new pole tomorrow at the cop. I was that minute. Okay, but um, I, I just wanted to hear that Liberty wasn't the culprit here, and that no. sort of. We've had some delay with them, but they're not really delaying the project. We're Good. having some back and forth, but it was like most excavation projects, a little harder once you got in the ground and started finding big rocks and different oh, things. Oh, that naturally came forth. Um, we did have, like I said, a little bit of problems with Liberty, but we got it sorted out fairly quickly with them. <laughs> Continue the project moving. So we're waiting for a new poll, and then we'll be finishing that up. Um, I was going to hit that in the DPW part, but I think Wednesday morning DPW is going to be over there to help them remove those spoils and do some things to help us keep the cost down for the time. So we'll be working on that. Um, so that was it. We have laid the conduit for the three phase power and that continues to move forward. Kurt's all the excavation has been doing all that work. We'll be moving back over to Whitney Hall. They were actually over there doing some work today too, finishing sidewalks, finishing the three-phase power in front of the building and starting on light poles and parking lot work. So that continues to move forward well. Um, at the public safety building, all the concrete for the slabs have been poured and complete. Um, pretty close to being fully cured and dried at this time, but um, panelized wall segments were supposed to show up today. I don't know if anybody drove by and seen they, it, but they didn't. They're supposed to be showing up and they should be starting to. But the steel is up for the doors at the front. And that looks gives you a little refinement as to what's happening. Yeah. So panelized construction should be here, I think, this week. I'll double check my schedule. It might be next week. But um, once it gets here, they think the panels will go up in about a week, week and a half time, and then the roof trusses should be here. So the, the bays will really start looking like something soon, and that project continues to, to move forward well. Um, just a reminder, again, the Mascoma Lakeside Park Committee is planning a grand opening ceremony on October 5th at 2 o'clock. So we'd like everybody to be invited, the select board especially, but all the public as well. The, to come help us celebrate the pretty close to completion of that part. We have a little bit, still some punch list items on the on the parking lot. Um, I think I told you guys once before, but we had some drainage issues. So we're asking the contractor to do a full one inch overlay on that. And our DPW is actually working with them trying to, to get a contractor in here to, to do it right this time. So we'll continue working on that project. Um, on the LWCF grant, um, the governor and council did retroactively approve our grant that they approved a couple years ago again. <laughs> so that's good news. <laughs> and then right now we're in the process. I wrote a letter to the federal government that looks like it's going to be approved to extend that grant. It was supposed to be completed by this September, but with all the few little things going on, we've asked to extend that for a year just to give us time to 
finish up that punch list and to finish the paperwork and stuff that needs to go along with that. So, working on that, um, the resilience grant that I talked to you guys about at the last meeting that um, from Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission. Um, as I told you, they have hired a resilience coordinator um, in an effort to get ahead of that project and kind of be front of the list as much as possible. We set up a meeting and me and Jim Taylor met with her last week to talk about stormwater needs in the town and places that we could see some resilience planning and engineering being helpful for the town to, to help look at those stormwater issues. So it was nice to meet her and talk through the projects that we have and give her a, a list of ideas. We can start that project and get a, like I said, ahead of all the other towns doing that. Um, is this Bettiful Pond Bridge on here at all? Because I heard you in another meeting saying maybe it's getting demoted in CIP. And it's, those poor folks are retired and they're like practically falling in the lake, pulling out. Our guys aren't doing the work to keep the culvert clean. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm not it, picking on our crew. They're very busy, but we've got retired community like playing like TPW backup crew every day. Like every day, they religiously go down and pull the stuff out of the culvert, and it's undersized. That is on. Is that on? Okay, because there we talked to her about that. I'm nervous they're going to fall in, and they're going to be an ambulance call, <laughs> and there's no service down there. So, which culvert is this? The Spectacle Pond Bridge is. It's a culvert, but it's a bridge. It's. Yeah, it's on our CIP plan right now to become a box culvert, and we're going to look at engineering for all of our bridges and that's one that we're we're not really talking about moving it completely but talking about removing it for now till we get that study and then we can have it planned and done right that's why i said demoted yeah. <laughs> i get certainly the engineering but i you know i think the neighborhood is really trying very hard those folks are worried i mean i'll just go the other way or drive over this month but <laughs> i don't want anyone to drown an effort to keep the so ground on. We track. definitely talked about that on the resilience planning grant yeah. because that's one of the places that almost washed out in last year's storm. And so DPW is really worried if we have those heavy storms that water could go over the road there and cause some major damage. So something we will be looking at. And if we can get that project engineered through this study, that would be a good thing for the town. Um, an update on the Emergency Services Advisory Committee. Um, they've reviewed the current state of our emergency services in town. They've had presentations by each of the chiefs. They've talked through kind of what we're doing now, and we've had a couple conversations about looking towards the future and, and where we could go, maybe some different ideas just to get them thinking at the many different ways that we can go on our emergency services. Um, we talked in the last meeting it was kind of not a meeting because they didn't have a quorum, but they talked a little bit about some of the data they'd like to see. So we're can, we're pulling that data together right now for their next meeting. So hopefully have a, a good meeting and start to craft a recommendation for the select board. And then I have been pushing them that as they start to come up with some recommendations that we should have a, a couple big public meetings to, to share that before it comes back to the board. Um, from planning, I don't want to talk about what Dan's going to talk about tonight, but um, just a reminder that the planning board's working on five or so zoning ordinance amendments that will be coming forward for town meeting that are coming out of this year's health grant. Um, and then DPW, just a little bit. Um, as I said, they'll be removing the some of the spoils this week to help with the three phase project and Whitney Hall project. And then they are continuing to work on the lead identification project in our water system. And other than that, they're kind of trying to wind up projects from the summer season and prepare for the transition into winter. <clears throat> All right. Any questions for Ed from the board? Mm -hmm. I just have one question on um, when we did the studies leading into water and sewer, we came out with um, some really good documentation and there was phasing suggested. And I'm not asking for it right now, but eventually like an update on because we've able been able to do a little bit more in some instances where we are on the phasing and what we're looking at, because I know we're saying no more big projects, but that's been a project that's like on deck. So well, we probably should talk about that because that's a big project that's really on deck. Um, mm -hmm. We've been 
We've been listed in the top 10 projects for 2026 for phase two at a cost of about $2.7 million. Um, and that's something that we will need to discuss going into this year's town meeting, that it probably should be on this warrant because the grant process for 2026 or the loan process um, is spring of 2025. So that's definitely something that we'll need to do. We're up high in the SRF loan category. And as you guys know and remember, but, you know, SRFs are really low interest loans and they also come with um, usually some sort of loan forgiveness. And I don't think we'll get ARPA money again, but I don't know if there may be some water infrastructure money out there still floating around that we might be able to get. So um, we did a good job getting approximately half of the last two um, in grant and forgiveness money. So if we can, I don't know that we'll quite get half again, but if we can move into that project and get some of that forgiven again, we may be. You know, Could you just remind us what, what this project will be? It's the second phases and I don't have all the details of what the phases are, but it's replacement of the old hundred year old water line mm. in the downtown area. Absolutely. And there may be some more um, pump station repairs and those types of things on the least one. Very crucial stuff. Yes, it's it's much needed. We're having more and more water breaks in these older lines and you know, getting those lines replaced is important. As we're moving forward with the the lead identification, it's not very far off that the EPA and DES is going to ask us to go replace those lead lines. Most of those are on the older water lines right. to begin with. So we can get ahead of that and get those out of the ground and replaced before they come in and make us do that. We'll be better off. So. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not sounding like they're going to be offering any money to go along with their mandate. They do not usually. <laughs> Sounds like we get to pay for it, whether it's benefit or not. That's kind of fine. That's it. Yeah. That's it. All right. All right. We'll take some questions. Go ahead, John. A question. When you mention a lead line, is it not a cast iron line with a lead joint? It so varies dramatically, but there is lead at places within our water system, and the EPA has mandated we survey and write reports around where it is, and then the next thing they're going to do is mandate that it all be removed. Yeah, I think perhaps services might be in uh, lead, but I don't know the main line. Some of the pipes are 1910s, yeah, and they, they are, actually I, are lead piping. I don't believe any of our I don't believe no. any of our main water lines no. are. No, no. But they are they're requiring cities and towns to replace the service into houses that are lead. Right. So wow. we have to identify all of those, and it's going to be that we need to replace. This them. is actually a national program. I understand. It's probably every residential connection and every state. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then I'm sure we do have some lead goose necks and connection points, like you said. Yeah. But, but you're correct. We do, we have no reason to believe that the actual water mains Man. are lead. No. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. There's nothing else there. We will move on to the business of the evening, starting with the planning board hot grant 2.0 grant application. And I think Dan's going to. Yeah, bring us all up to speed on what the planning board did at the last week. We had a really good planning board meeting last week. Um, people don't know we had a we had a hot grant one which got over in July. Um, they're now going into second round. They were somewhat impressed by our first one because they they basically told us to come and ask for more. Um, in the second round, we also have had Rob has gone to the Housing Academy, which they put on the people who are doing the hop grant, as well as Dave Frack is now going through the Housing Academy. Um, they have to have, we have to have at least one person who's been through the Housing Academy. What we're looking to do this time with this grant is finish the entire rewrite of zoning. But also, they're going to. They're also allowing us to use it to re to redo site plan and subdivision in order to get the three of them to mesh together. What we decided at the meeting last Wednesday was each member is going to take a portion of the zoning regs, and we're going to write a draft. 
so that we can put something on the table. We feel that there's all kinds of ideas that put on the table, but until you've got something down on paper, you can't get people to truly react to it. So that's what we're, that's what our next plan is. We will be writing that. We then will, our next phase will be to have two or three members of the public who are in the, that district be a part of a small group that writes writes it through. But the hot grant is to get it paid for. What we're what we're figuring our timeline is September 30th, you have to have the grant in. They're going to be around December um, awarding the grants. And we're saying for probably the first four to six months, we're not going to need a consultant. Okay. We're going to want to get it down on paper so that we can get public input and then have a third group, a larger group, come and respond, like we did with the lakes, the uh, lake area. We had a bunch of people in here who had all kinds of ideas on the lake. Well, Brad's going to be in charge of the lake one because <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be. Um, but it's going this time. It will be up to a hundred thousand um, dollars available. Um, we're hoping and we believe we've been told by them that they were very impressed by the first group because we seem to be closer to the cutting edge than a lot of places are. And we're in Grafton County, which is where there's a large lack of housing and there's a large cost of rental properties as well as housing. And employment issue, it has a lot to do with the employment. I mean, we we heard from the people from Hitchcock saying that they lose people because people can't buy houses here. They also lose people they've hired who go, well, we can't afford to come to Hanover. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by doing this, we'll be able to. And I'll also get into because we said we have a couple of zoning things. A couple of one of them is going to be probably to make larger ADUs. Because we're finding that people can't 750 square foot ADU um, doesn't work for generational housing. Mm -hmm. um, you need a larger footprint. And we also had a presentation that Phil Vermeer put on Wednesday where he showed you could actually have a primary and two ADUs that were the same size. So that you actually had 3,600, three reflex basically, but they're ADUs, which you could put down in the in the uh, downtown area. Um, right now, anyone can build basically a threeplex because you can have two ADUs. What's an ADU? Accessory dwelling unit. It means I have a primary house and I say, okay, I want to add something on the side. Now, the one thing you're going to need to do if you're not in the sewer area is your septic system has to be large enough to handle it. And the regulation, as you set it up, is not you tell me it has to be certified that, yes, you have the septic capacity to handle it. So what we're looking for is we're going to work on that piece. Another piece we're working on is there's a couple of ambiguities in the um, zoning. <clears throat> like in the R5 district, it says if you've got five acres, you can have one house, one unit. If you've got 10 acres, you can have two units without subdividing, except the ambiguity is further down, it says you can only have one building on a lot. One primary dwelling. One primary dwelling on a lot. So we're going to have to fix that through zoning. Um, but what we're looking for tonight is we need the uh, letter of support mm -hmm. because the uh, the housing academy said that's a big piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we that's what we are looking for, uh, we, which means we probably will be hire, hiring a consultant come spring with this with this money, mm -hmm. as well as using it for 
public outreach mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. You're, you're really coming yeah. towards the end. I mean, slowly, but this coming a, towards the this, end. This has a better, a longer life to it also. What yeah. happened last mm -hmm. night was we started in September. You had to have everything done mm -hmm. by July. This one has this grant has a two year life on it, nice. which means you can get the zoning done first and then you can spend if you get the zoning approved, then you can mesh it to the site plan right. and the subdivision regs. So the planning board has basically made a commitment mm -hmm. to go forward and get this done. We're not going to start from new, but we're going to make it. So that every what's happened. I'll go right through it. There's been 34 different, I would call them rewrites since it first went in. If you look at the front page of the zoning ordinance, there's one every year or one every other year. Well, when you added things, you didn't look back and say, what else did that affect? So hopefully that'll clean that up the same way as the master plan did. And just on the side, Dave isn't here because he's working on master plan meeting tonight. Let's be doing the next five chapters. Do you have a draft or is a vote of the board sufficient at this point? I think Ed might even have one. He gave it to, or do you have it? No, I mean, I, what they need tonight from us is a vote, a, a vote to write a letter of support. So we need to basically authorize Ed to write a letter of support and then we'll yeah. want a substitute. So just, we'll, we'll, just to vote then. We'll just to vote. Just to vote for the letter of support. Yeah. And we just have to have it in by the 30th. Right. I make a motion to ask the town manager, their designee, to draft a letter of support from the select board for the a second New Hampshire housing opportunity planning pop. Grants under the authority of RSA 673 16, Roman numeral I. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. It's great. So can you draft that letter, Ed? Yeah. I okay. will work with David. Uh, <laughs> and if you need my signature, I'm leaving <laughs> on Monday. And we'll not be back in town until after the grant is due. So it doesn't get done. We'll get yeah. Else? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, don't, you don't need mine for this. But if, but if you happen to get it done by Friday, I can come in and do it. But yeah. I cannot do it next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Going is hard. Outstanding work. Yeah. All right. Um, Moving on. Okay, procedures to avoid dealing of mobile home, taxing the mobile home. Mm -hmm. This is sort of a continuation of discussions the last two years where Ed walked us through some uh, mobile home tax dealing issues. And Ed was sort of asking if we would consider having a bigger policy of just how to deal with them in general. So, do you want to go ahead and kick off? But yeah, I don't. I mean, we can make some notes. I don't know if we actually yeah. write a policy or okay. write procedures. I think procedures would be better than a policy okay. at that point if we want to do that. But mm -hmm. um, this really came to light, as you guys may remember, two years ago, I brought this to you. I talked about a lot of the problems that not only us, but a lot of other towns have deeding mobile homes that are in arrears on their taxes that are also in a park. It gets very complicated because they usually owe park rent and all those things. Right. As we take the mobile home technically or legally, we take on the park rent that's due. Yeah, I can't believe that because yeah. the park rent in this case was, was over twenty thousand dollars owed. Yeah. And what does the park have some responsibility for dealing with their own finances? I actually stepped into a mess in Claremont where they were fighting with the park owner mm -hmm. and neither person would do anything. To do it so they were 11 years in this battle of yeah. this mobile home yeah so of course taxes that were due were extremely high yeah. park rent was through the roof um i was able to finagle some sort of deal and we got it off the plate but in that i worked with jim raymond who happens to be our attorney up yeah. here mm -hmm. and we wrote that contract that you guys saw mm -hmm. two years ago to yeah. 
have the agreement in place before we tax deed it to sell it to the mobile home for a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, I gave you the example in here when we did that mm -hmm. two years ago, the mobile home part tried to sell the mobile home after we did, and they ended up paying between five and six thousand dollars to get it removed from their park. So oftentimes taking a mobile home in a park, they're usually not in good condition and they end up being a liability. Mm -hmm. um, because of the way we have to tax deed, it takes a lot of time. And the park got a little frustrated about how long it had to take for us to go through our process before they could do anything. So this time they're asking if kind of, can we negotiate with the people and just take the mobile home? And they asked me what to do with taxes, but I only thought it was fair to come to you guys and say, at that point, we would just abate the taxes. You take your loss, we take our small loss instead of taking this liability on. Everybody goes their own way and we get a new mobile home put on a site that can start paying taxes again. So that's kind of what I would like to do um, in this process for full transparency. They were actually working on this and they have the deeds for two of the mobile homes we're working on now. So we'll be dealing with them on those taxes as we move forward. And then they're in the process of trying to get another one that's not it's about two years away from us tax deeding, but it's in probate and it's going to be there if we let it go long enough. So it's one of those things that I thought we should talk about, make a decision. However we decide to do, then I'll work with the Lakeside Co-op and come back on the two trailers they already own. And then if they end up taking the other one, we can make that decision at the time. But I would like to have some sort of idea and procedure of what we'd like to do. So as we work on future ones, we can make it as smooth as possible for both entities. And I would also like to do something like this where we can push the town away from that possible liability. Mm -hmm. um, instead of just taking a mobile home like I put in my write-up, we also had legal fees and transfer fees and all those things that come along with tax deeding and a lot of administrative time. And so. Ultimately, I think working with them to abate the taxes and walk away is less cost to the town, better financially for the town, and we can move forward. I think I also wrote in this one, if we took all three of these by tax deed, the taxes due are about $4,000. The removal of one mobile home is more than that. So. <clears throat> and I, so just... I'm not familiar with how you get to start a mobile home park. Are we allowing more? Because I, I think mobile home parks are an accessible way to provide somebody with an affordable place to live. And I think they're a very valid form of housing, but they're the easiest thing to drop it like it's hot and leave us with a big bill. So I really like the idea of doing a procedure, but also just thinking forward to our housing discussions. Are we going to be setting ourselves up for more potential liability as we redo our zone? I don't believe we allow those right now. Um, I, you may know better. Than I, I don't know, know but <laughs> I just I worry because this we already have some liability here, and I don't I don't think they're an invalid form of housing. I think they're a great place to start. Yeah. They're very affordable, but I also this is a relatively common thing to have happen. We do a couple of these each year. Well, not necessarily. We've done one since I've been here. Well, I think we we have this talk. So <laughs> we have so. this talk often, but I think I think finding a procedure, you'll mm -hmm. find that you'll. You'll get them off the books faster. Getting them off the books faster means they're going to owe less taxes. You know, out of the four thousand for three of these, the two that they have deeds to, with interest and penalties and everything, is about a thousand dollars each. Do mobile home parks have difficulty evicting people from the park? I mean, I, I would it's, think after they all... some, but I've also talked to them, and they're going to to make their action a lot faster. Um, right. One of the things that happens in a place like Lakeside here is it was built by investors. Investors ran it for a while, mm -hmm. and then the mobile home owners buy it from them. Mm -hmm. They're not really business savvy, and they don't know how to run a mobile home park, but now they're buying the one that they own. So they have been working with an attorney. I've been working with the president of their board, and they're stepping up the eviction process, those types of things. Well, that sounds reasonable. That was my question. Is there a difference between a co-op park, as John describes yes. it, and a mm -hmm. completely privately owned park? There is, yeah. 
Um, so this procedure you, you're saying would apply to both the co-op type of park as well as a privately owned park? I think it needs to. We only have a couple small ones in town that are privately owned, but we would get in that same little vicious circle of, yeah. you know, technically if we take it, we owe rent moving forward and probably backwards on that. I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, it's just a weird circumstance the way mobile home parks were. Yeah. I know because the rent is more than they ever pay in taxes. So it's a yeah. total loss for if you no. take a mobile home that's on a private piece of land, even if the mobile home's worthless, the land is worthless. Right. Yeah. Because so that was for in a park, it doesn't work that way. When we abate the taxes, do we also abate therefore the school tax and the county tax? We abate. And do we as a town owe that money? Well we, we, did. we paid it already. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. We paid it. So we're giving up not only the Enfield tax money, if you will, but we're also giving up mm -hmm. and right. paying the county as well as school tax. Yeah, okay. but it's all wrapped up in that same fee that I told you that, yeah. you know, each of the two mobile homes we'll be talking about that they already needed are about $1,000 total with interest right. and penalty. If we have to pay five to 6000 to get rid of one of these, We've discussed the taxpayers more than we'll recoup in that. So just playing devil's advocate for a minute, what happens if we don't take it? That's on for If we don't then we get in that vicious cycle that I just talked about where nobody's getting their money for 11, 12, 13 years. And what's the liability to the town, therefore? If we have not touched it, we haven't attempted to repossess it for taxes. What we're doing is we're continuing to lose taxes year after right. year after Agreed, year. Agreed, there. But in terms of a liability risk, we don't enhance our risk per well, se. The, the liability is the lack of funds. So yeah, you're taking okay. on the liability of right. knowing you're not going to get taxes until you take it. It's a loss of revenue, a loss of tax revenue that is the risk for the town. There's no like legal, we're going to get in trouble liability. There never is. The liability that you assume taking it is we're going to have to get rid of this somehow because we now own a mobile. It seems to me that the owners of a mobile park would satisfy the tax bill themselves and then they'd own it. They already have satisfied it because they get one bill. If they're not getting a bill for each unit. They get a bill for the land, right? They also get a bill for the individual. The, the individual gets a bill for the unit. The unit gets billed. Right. The unit gets billed, but they don't get billed a postage stamp because they don't own it. They get just the mobile home fee. Yeah. Well, it, it puts them in that position of you know, we're owed $20,000 worth of rent we're not going to get. Right. We're not going to touch this thing either then. And but they don't owe you anything until they touch it. Going and back. that's where you get in that little vicious circle of nobody wanting to touch this thing. Well, I think going back to your point that this is a co-op, I think it's a, the co-ops are a very nice idea um, and it's a great way to be owner empowered. However, on the flip side, if you don't have that business savvy and the business knowledge, um, you're accruing a liability, and a lot of people don't understand what it's like to accrue a liability on paper. Yeah. Now you go to, say you have a major systems failure and you need a new septic, you're right, because one of our major ones right. that we're talking about is on septic, not on sewer. Now you have a debt to equity issue. And I know that's all like fancy financial jargon, but that's the bottom line is these people are also, we have a duty to help be good stewards overall, I think. You know, it's not our, we don't, we can't babysit everyone, but I think we need to help them out and not cut yeah. off our nose to spite our face. And I will tell you the one where they got in the little vicious circle was privately owned. And that investor was smart enough to say, if I touch this, I'm going to owe all of that. And if I don't touch it, I don't. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That, that was so I think the more we can work with them in partnership and say, let's get these taken care of quickly and get them back on the books with someone that's paying rent and paying taxes. It's better for the town. It's better for the park. What else do we um, I was just wondering, like, so is this is this this is describing speeding up the process? Yeah, and working with them. I mean, personally, I like the fact that they're willing to take the initiative and go try to get these out of probate deeded straight to the park mm -hmm. instead of us spending hours of the clerk's time and money sending mm -hmm. notification after notification and, you know, having 
to take one by tax deed, and then we have to either try to sell it or initiate the legal work to sell it back to the to the park. You know, if they can do that part and take deed of it, and we abate the taxes, we're done, and we walk away. So our Are people time. Living in the usually, no. If there is, they would have to deal with the eviction process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Which is another really good reason. <laughs> we don't want to own that process either. Yeah. <laughs> it's very unpleasant and very costly. These are sometimes elderly people who have passed. Um, sometimes, though, they have their some squatters, <laughs> too. So it can be complicated. Um, what do you need from us to do this procedure? Do you need, like, a general blessing? Do you need a motion? I think just having the talk and I saying... I think he's looking for direction from us. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I, I'm in the camp of let's do what's financially yeah, expedient for everybody else in town. Uh, okay. And that in this, you know, in this case, the financially expedient thing to do is to go with your suggestion and figuring out a way to not, not actually own them ourselves, to have, but mm -hmm. to have the parks figure out how to, you know, replace them or resell them or or whatever and get them back on the take them or do it if we have to take them by tax deed i would like to do it where we don't put them we put it out to sale yeah. last time to see if we could sell it yeah. i would like to just boom take pull it, it along yeah it still comes across our desk if you will in order to be yeah. able to move to evade, forward yeah yeah. Right. yeah go for it i agree as a general process that'll save the town money long term yeah. it will Okay, so you will see in the near future the two that they've already taken come before you for an abatement, and then we'll work on this one to make it some time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so, introductory discussion about Depot Street, Union Street, and police buildings. And this is getting ourselves going because as the new public safety building is moving along with construction hopefully by the middle of next year we will have three empty facilities um did you have anything you want to start us off with there no i was just yeah. bringing this forward um we yeah. had a couple busy meetings and i thought this would be a this is a little bit lighter meeting and i thought it'd be a great time to bring forward just an initial discussion on these buildings mm -hmm. You know, obviously, we're not looking tonight to know exactly what right. we want to do with them. I would like to get a little bit of feedback, if, even if it doesn't get done tonight, of, you know, are we thinking about keeping them or selling them? That might be the good first mm -hmm. start, and then we can start talking yeah. about the details of how and what we want to do with them as we move forward. But mm -hmm. we do have six to eight months to figure this out before we do mm -hmm. anything. The Depot Street building. We're still kind of stuck in that little, are we going to buy the land? Are we not going to buy the land? You guys remember that discussion. That land needs to go before the legislature, who's the only one that can sell state land. Mm -hmm. So if we want to try to do that, it needs to get in front of the legislature before the legislative session, or we're going to be waiting up another year to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, we have not done any Brownsfield testing on those. I just talked to Rob the other day, and he's... He's pushing them again to make sure that we're on the list and ready for funding. We were trying not to fund it ourselves. But I also think we could move, we could move forward in the purchase process because nothing says we have to purchase it till we're signing paperwork at the end. But we can mm -hmm. continue trying to to get that done and see if we can get a soil sample or two. I don't think it'll take a lot unless we actually find something there. So I think we should write into any purchase agreement if we decide to even go down this path that they own it already. They own the problem. Like, I don't want to sign for anything that has contaminants in the soil. Yeah. They own their own problem. They're the ones who were the lessees to the prior organization, which was the oil company. We, It would be crazy for there not to be contaminants in the soil. I highly doubt that it's clean. And I, I personally do not want to own someone else's problem including the state of New Hampshire, they never hand money back down to us. They hand us problems hand over fist. That's fine. <laughs> and how to, what, what's the role of the building on that property? Does it have any value use? Future use, you mean? Yeah. Someone someone might be interested in purchasing the building and they yeah. could make the purchase of the land yeah. from the state. Yeah. The neighbor across the street brought their front yard from the state. As a yeah. private residence. Yeah. 
No, I think you could do that. I think there's a pretty good possibility that we could get that money back. Mm -hmm. My plan, if we bought the land, was to work with our zoning board and do some things to subdivide that and keep a section of it for parking along the rail trail. We know parking downtown is needed and being able to have a place where people can park to access it with bikes and walking and that thing. Is the state obligated to stick by that um, purchase price offer of 54000 No, that's what the state assessed it at and said that we should be purchasing it at, but the legislature is the only one that has a chance to change that. My plan, if we move forward with this, is to take it to the legislature and talk about building some rail trail parking on it, which would be an asset for their mm -hmm. asset, if you will. And, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be something that the town would take on to maintain the parking and uh, have it there for mm -hmm. a state rail trail. And I would use that argument and the fact that we're a municipality to try to get that price down. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not on the hook of buying it until we say, yeah, we'll agree to that. And is it self-defeating that our new assessment is dramatically different from that number? They may need to do it. We're two years old on that, so they may even know the new it. assessment of that land. Yeah, I know. They don't look at ours. Okay. They go off theirs, but we may have to have that number reevaluated because we we drug our feet for two years since they've given it to us. How much land is there? This is one third of an acre. Yeah, it's a third of an acre um, for that particular property. But uh, the land has a. Taking a, a, a minor step back, I just want to touch back on where the original SPAC report was. Just, I just want to take one little step back for some context. So, you know, 2020, the original NPAC wrote the report um, after going through lots of these properties in great detail. And the recommendations there, just from a big picture standpoint, were to sell disposable unsatisfactory facilities and properties and listed Shed Street, Depot Street, and Union Street. Yeah. So, two of those we're talking about yeah. tonight. And then repurpose the the current police station if a new public safety facility is built, including relocating the FOM food pantry. So when it comes to the, the Union Street and the Depot Street, I, I'm in favor of taking the steps we need to move us forward in selling both of those properties. Mm -hmm. um, specifically for um, Depot Street, if we are going to propose a parking lot, then we should go through purchasing the property. If we're not going to do a parking lot, then there's no need to purchase the property. And we can just go forward with a sale of the building and the new owner could do as they please. Um, that was sort of be my, my suggestion route for that one. Um, but either way, I think we should be moving in the direction of selling that property. Uh, some of the value of that prop i like i like having the parking and it's nice to be able to divert people mm -hmm. say out of lakeside park like hey it's full you have your bike i see you have your bike did you know there's an awesome spot right yeah. i've definitely done that a few times people don't know it's there but the flip side is say somebody does want it for i'm going to make something up rail trail ice cream right mm -hmm. they're going to want parking so if we maybe it's enough parking to possess just the other side, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it the other side. Mm -hmm. So the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side is mm -hmm. you face towards the rail trail. But mm -hmm. I think that seems to me like business-wise, you have more options if you sell the building and let them figure it out, no? I would say as a business owner, I'd love to have public parking right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Else public parking, but I'm like, <laughs> and I, but is the board willing to? No, I, you know, I, I, I think having public access to the rail trail is a value to the community. I think having can, a parking lot there is a value. You can walk to the new brewery. <laughs> you, can do, you can do. You can access the rail trail. Yeah, do we do we need parking to the extent that we want to deal with all the possible consequences of, of contaminated soil? And no, I think you can. No, we'd have. We, we would want the answer to that question before we made the agreement. But that's part of big picture, if we're going to move forward with an intended sale of the property, that would be part of the due diligence that we would do. Yeah. But we only need to do that due diligence if we're thinking we're going to have a parking lot. Do we think that selling just the building is feasible? Uh, there have been cases of that, you know, before, and there's people who are willing to buy buildings with leases and stuff. So yes. I don't think it's... I think you'd have to get something money. from the state allowing long-term... Mm -hmm. Are stating that they would allow them to say they're long term, and then it would it would really reduce the purchase price of the building. Mm -hmm. 
you're not going to get market value for something that's not on its own market. And no, we are but putting, it was, but it would get it on the tax rolls. But it would get it on the tax rolls. And if we're putting in, and I'm just going to throw this out there um, because I know we've had a historic preservation conversation surrounding this yep. building, we're going to put in any contingencies or any requirements about owning the building, changing the building, yep. then that's going to further reduce the price too. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, I guess I'd be in favor of doing the exploratory. Mm -hmm piece with the legislature and whatever whatever level we have to get to to push the state to make a commitment or not to doing this testing i think they should be paying for the testing not us we didn't contaminate the ground okay. we weren't the you know we weren't the one leasing it when it got contaminated so well, that's why i put them on the state list yeah. it's also going to be a little bit of an issue because the state will have to approve the funding and approve the testing mm -hmm. being done because it's their land but at least on the list, it's state money that's paying for the testing. And if we walk it right up to the line and we say, this isn't a good deal for us, we're like, so bad, too bad, so sad. Here's your $1 historic building with all these covenants. I mean, that's like the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. You deal with the state. So for that property, is the consensus that we are just in moving forward with the steps necessary to engage in a sale of that property? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Get rid of it. Has yet to be decided as whether we can sell it with land. Well, there's, but there's, yes, there's a lot of open sale of the property. But but Ed needs to know a general direction so that he can make plans. You know, mm -hmm. with the state for the testing, yeah. figure out what needs to be submitted for the legislature to do a to potentially negotiate a sale. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing with the legislature, there are time frames. So getting started on that now yeah. is advantageous. Um, and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, I think I can get an updated assessment from them mm -hmm. and then just write a letter back. Yeah. Initiating the sale process contingent on testing the property mm -hmm. for contaminants. And I'm only interested in paying the assessed value for anything, even if we're going to turn around and sell it, if it's if they clean up their mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that's front for myself. Mm -hmm. yep. So you're talking about buying the land so you can sell both together? Or so we so invest because of the time frames, investigating purchasing the property, right. which involves a soil sample to see right. if there's any contamination. Right. And then if that's feasible, we'll then have a decision to make of whether to apply for a zoning uh, adjustment so that we could have a public parking lot at the end, or we could choose to sell the whole mm -hmm. thing. Um, so there'd be there's sort of a couple of choices. One, do we sell it? Then if we sorry, do we purchase it? Then if we do purchase the property, do we try to subdivide it so that there's a parking lot for right. public access to the rail trail, or do you just sell it all in one piece as we're staging along? And if we don't purchase it? If we don't purchase it, then I think we would, my view would be we would, we would try to find a way to sell just the building and have a new owner, you know, face the problem. Right. I don't think this is going to be necessarily a money-making endeavor. It's going to be a cut our losses endeavor. We've gotten our we've gotten our money's worth out of practically nothing out of that thing. Yeah, I mean, I think fundamentally, the, the certainly the original M fact, and and I still don't see like a public use for that facility, so yeah. it should return. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand the basement yeah. is practically a swimming pool anyway. Yeah, sort of smells beer. It smells terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to, I'll yep. stay away from it. Yeah. We're just okay. a ringing endorsement for sales. <laughs> we should keep going. So we have a, we have a general concept of a direction for that property. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Union Street okay. to the fire station. Yeah. Uh, again, the, the original impacts suggestion was to sell that. Yeah. Uh, recommendation was also to sell that property. Uh, are there? Yeah. Let's do it. So well, that must have some value. Mm -hmm. And so, whatever brownfield we have to do, we have to do. Let's pray there's no. Yeah, I mean that one. I don't have any. I don't think there's. Any I don't think there's any reason to no. you do any testing the there. You, rid of it. Yep. you think we can do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's never had a use that where you would well, inspect. Brownfield. No, no, no. I was wondering, like in terms well, of we talked about having a decontamination space for our people coming back in. So are we sure that we have not contaminated it with? No, it's a different kind of decon. We as don't decon on it's a station. I mean. As long as it's, you know way more about it than I do. Per the MFAC and per what we originally agreed upon two years ago, I'm in very much in favor of selling that structure. Can, can we RFP that one out? Well, that's the next question. Is, is, do we want, what, what process do we want to use? I mean, obviously, we're still something. You know, that I, I believe that's a marketable property, and we should talk to a broker. 
Okay. And do we want to do a similar thing to Shed Street where we look for uh, RFPs responses so that we can sort of guide what goes on to that property? I think Kate's is indicating she would like. That. I would like to see an RFP process simply because you're in a residential neighborhood. So yeah, somebody could buy it for their lawn business or whatever and sell it through a broker, and maybe that's fine. But um, it depends on how committed this board is to trying to get more housing in here. I guess that's I. I really, you know, I think there's an opportunity there. Although we had a hard time getting people in, so. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone's busy trying to build housing, so maybe it won't fly. Do we try an RFP? And if we don't get good responses, we put it on the market and do what Tracy said and see if a broker can sell it. Or do we get an opinion from a few brokers on what they think and come back and make a decision? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's almost. I thought we were well on the way to making a decision on Shed Street. No, no. This yeah. Yeah, I, I'm confused. I, I, think, I think I think Union Street. And Union. Right, not, but Shed Street is what we'll just say. Yeah, I'm sorry. Shed Street it's is just, in Yeah, process. it's just me being the Shed Street like, process, like, like the Shed Street the process. process. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think that process is, you know, it's elongated when you're trying to get something like housing in place. Do we want to go through another elongated process? Um, or do we put it out for RFP, cap it, and say, we didn't get what we were kind of hoping for, what can a broker do, or do we run them in parallel and have a few brokers mm -hmm. give us their opinion, like what the sale? I think I'd like to request Ed to uh, interview a couple of different brokers and see if there's any interest in any of them taking it on as a marketable property. Would you, do you want, are you, do you think we should put um, sort of, you know, constraints around the sale or, or or preferences for what we would like to see there. Union Street? Yeah. No. I'd I, like to see what brokers think about it. They're going to have to conform to the current zoning. Mm -hmm. right. I, I'd like to see what brokers think about the property and if they have an opinion. And if we like their opinion, then uh, we can have them consider marketing it. Mm -hmm. Alice, do you have uh, any comments? Um, why wouldn't we do a concurrent RFP? A concurrent with? Sure. Concurrent with the broker thing. Yeah, well, Union Street and Depot Street are two entirely different entities in terms of. No, we're talking about Union Street. Yeah, we are. We're only talking about Union Street. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could be looking at RFPs because no one says if we put it up with a broker and we don't like what they come back with, we have to take it. But I think if we go a different route, we still have to pay the broker. Well, I think, I think, once we sign. I think what Tracy's if getting at is all that RFP first. And yeah, that's what get. I'm in favor of. RFP. So you'd RFP uh, to see if brokers are interested. Is that what we you're are. suggesting? Yeah. No, she's saying RFP out for development. I'm saying if you're going to try to do both concurrently or something, I would RFP, see what comes back, and decide if you want to put it. Put the I'd like to have somebody have some preliminary discussions with brokers and see what their thoughts are first. Yeah, we because once we've RFP'd it, we've locked ourselves into a certain path. Right, once you are, yeah, I mean, yeah. an RFP is very open. Once yeah. you, once you get brokers in here, you're locking yourself into a right. path. I didn't say contract with them quite yet. I just want to know what their opinion is of that property. <laughs> I think that what you're getting at, Tracy, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you don't. So we did not do a great job necessarily of marketing Shed Street as evidenced by only receiving a single proposal. Now, while we're all optimistic about the results of that proposal, we thought we would receive more, and we did not. Um, and I think that's fair. Like, the, like that's a property that probably should receive more. So having some marketing support, which would be a broker, would be potentially advantageous. Um, but I do think we should have an RFP and try to come up with a good solution for the town. Uh, I don't know how to blend those two. Uh, I don't know how to blend them either, quite frankly, yeah. and have them be concurrent. I think that one has to proceed yeah. over the other. And I'm just suggesting that the interview or conversations with commercial brokers should precede the RFP. I think if it's just a conversation, yeah. you could be having those at the same time yeah. your RFP is going. Mm -hmm. Well, we have time at this point to do both because we're, yeah. you know, we're talking about something yes. that happened next summer. I agree, we do. Um, which is part of why we're having a conversation now. Now, exactly. So what information do you think we're going to get from 
a broker if we're not contracting them? Are they just going to recommend prices, recommend uses? What, 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 do you, what do you envision us getting from them? Both of the above, mm -hmm. prices and potential uses, based on their knowledge of the developer marketplace. Okay. And then if we, so we, so we got some recommendations, um, sort of a list of, you know, this use, this, what do you call this, you know, this use, this price, different use, different mm -hmm. price, sort of. Um, then then we have a decision things, um, whether we continue down the broker path or whether we go with the RFP. Well, but you could, that's the point where you could um, almost blend the two because we could, maybe you're not doing a full RFP, but you could tell the broker, this is what we want to sell. And they would then be charged with marketing and bringing in people who are willing to do a type of project. Not necessarily a specific At that project, point, you can put some refinement to type. your RFP. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the size of that lot? No, no. Two thirds of an acre. It's not, it's not what kind of project? <laughs> it's a two. Yeah. And, and well, what, what, what can you put there? It's just a housing lot. You could put. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it would have to be like I, I think we're getting carried away here. Duplexes, triplexes. No, it'd be a duplex or a triplex. And I mean. Okay. Yeah, I think you can envision a lot there, actually. Yeah. I think you could envision. A little cottage encampment type. Nice. I mean, and you could. Whatever. Can, yeah. I mean, you could have a mixed use there. Yeah. I think that makes it valuable. Or maybe somebody wants what, what, it to What makes it? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the rail show. Makes oh, I agree there completely. It's not zone commercial though, so. Right. No, and I'd like to see it stay residential, frankly. It is a residential street, but it could be larger residential. You have the size. I want to say it. it's one of the bigger lots. I think it's around two thirds of an acre. <laughs> It is actually, I do know. Um, oh, look at that. half an acre almost. I was going to say it's, it's yeah. around half. Yeah. Point four eight. Um, actually, it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess maybe, Eric, is it so, a question between the board members too of what we want to see? Like, do we want to just let it fly and it? It is what it is, or are we asking for a certain well, outcome? I think if you're just going to sell it and let somebody do whatever they want with it, yeah. then you're just doing a sale process. Yeah. If we want to encourage a particular use, then you do an RFP. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the that's sort of the question. We just talked about parking well, across the street, mm -hmm. literally exactly across the street. Mm -hmm. So is another option that's out there that you would retain some parking. I'm just throwing it out because we just had like a conversation right across this, oh not across the street. I'm sorry, across the rail trail. Yeah. Just yeah. You know. no it's a it's a legit question. It becomes a challenge because of the way the current building is on that lot. And it's hard to have parking access to the rail trail yeah. until that building is unless that building is removed. Uh, I think that building might have lived its life. It may have, but you someone know. might want it though. I do think there's yeah. a lot of options Perfect. though. Yeah. I mean, if you took that building down and you look yeah. at it as a whole, right? And right. we can see from Kelleher's property and some other ones right. that you yeah. could have six, you know, six eight, ten. It's a very developable property. piece of property with the build with the footprint yeah. that's there. And remember, at a point just a few years ago, there was enough property on the left side that we drove through it to Depot Street mm -hmm. while road work was being done. Mm -hmm. So we know there's land there. Mm -hmm. I'm just suggesting getting the advice of commercial brokers that may be in touch with the market at this present time, not to cut off that possibility of knowing which direction we might go in and being able to shape the RFP accordingly. No, I think getting the advice from brokers at this point is perfectly appropriate. Is that, and then moving forward with more discussions. Yeah, we're going to have to see the RFP yeah, yeah. to develop it anyways, right. but I would suggest we somewhat mirror Shed Street to leave it open and Get it onto the table and we i mean the broker conversation they're not going to spend a lot of time on somebody who hasn't signed on the dotted line right they're going to be like it's saleable it might be worth x it might do this it's going to be very general it's not going to be anything earth shattering mm -hmm. they're not going to give you a ton the only time you get a big opinion from a broker is when they come to town meeting and tell you you're wrong that's 
a little cynical, but no, I mean that's what happens in this town. It's proven. <laughs> either way, it's it's a fair path forward. So let's let's talk to some professionals and get their opinions of the use recommended uses and prices based on that use. Right. And then that could guide us to the next step of what um, you know. Do we want to just sell it as is and Anybody go from there sees it, or do we want to guide an RFP process and sort of guide what is what is constructed, what that becomes? But either way, we're moving down the path of selling it. Oh yes, yeah. I, I think the other thing that I want to raise is I don't want us to run for a quick sale to take some cash up front when we are giving up future tax revenue potentially on the backside. So just want to be cognizant of the fact that if we also think we could get through an RFP, which might generate more tax income based on units, we going for the quick sale and a chunk mm -hmm. of change that isn't going to over the long term bring us the same kind of tax revenue mm -hmm. might not be worth it. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that property? Um, then the final one on the list is the police station. Uh, the recommendation from the original MPAC was to repurpose it um, and include the food pantry, but it was, as my memory goes of that, it was, that was definitely the most nebulous recommendation because of the challenges of its location and the concurrent parking with the planning around Whitney Hall um, and whatnot. Uh, Nebulous but, on what? I guess I missed something. I mean, it was not. It was not specific and targeted. It was written as repurposed, general as a okay. very general yeah. statement, and that was intentional. It was not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there there was no. Here's what we should do with that property coming out of that committee. Um, I think that in the, the way that there was with the other two. Yeah, and at the time Ed wasn't with us. Yeah. I guess I'd love to see the current team with Ed in his leadership role make a recommendation. Yeah, we'll certainly look over those kind of general yep. recommendations and then come to us with a recommendation about how he sees doing operations and business and then field. Um, I can tell you from having worked briefly in that building um, and you interact, the design interior design of that building is uh, problematic at best. And so I think you're, de depending on what you make for a recommendation, they make for a recommendation, we're going to be looking at some expenses, which we just said we weren't doing in the immediate Future, I mean, but the decision we have to make is do we want to take ownership of it, retain ownership of it, mm -hmm. or just sell it and say goodbye? I think we have to personally retain ownership of that property. Um, I'd rather, well, I, I, I believe we should retain it because it has the shared parking lot. Yeah. And in order for the building to have any future utility for any use, if it was privatized, mm -hmm. we need the parking lot for Whitney Hall. So, therefore, uh, that and other reasons, I believe we should retain the building. I believe it has a future use as a part of the town campus. I agree. I, I will say the parking, the little parking lot behind the police station was kind of planned and developed as part of that campus. <laughs> so there was parking planned in there for the new mm -hmm. And I think just look at the total cost of ownership and what our exposure is going to be, you know, into the future. And, you know, there's structurally, um, I know that there were records in the attic, but the attic trusses weren't actually meant for records. So, you know, that's, we're going to call it storage was not supposed to be storage. So, mm -hmm. you know, just look at it as kind of open space. And I think we've talked a lot about, you know, recreation and um, what the future of rec looks like, and that continues to develop. Uh, and Agreed. we're never, um, we're certainly never, we're always short on meeting spaces in general in this town. Um, and so having, if you have an opportunity, maybe you can use it for rec and maybe you have some open floor space, maybe you. I don't think we need to define what no, the building becomes at this time. Meetings. There's, it's um, to use a term, we said we were not going to enter into any major projects, mm -hmm. for, projects for a while, uh, a year or two. Uh, however, retaining the building um, makes sense. Um, I also think that in the interim, we can make use of the ground floor of the building should the um, food bank be interested in using it. Um, I think it would be a good use mm -hmm. for it, as we did discuss back then. Mm -hmm. And that may be simply an interim use downstairs. 
Yeah, you'd have to go to the Friends of Mass Gomo board and yeah. see what their plans are. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I think um, also we have we have some storage things around town with recreation where we have cabinets here and there. And so, you know, is it an option to maybe lower our heat costs by not heating it as much for the winter? I'm not saying turn it off mm -hmm. and ruin the building, but just get some economies out of it while we make some decisions and Ed's team makes a, mm -hmm. a proposal and a plan because I don't see us making the plan for them. Mm -hmm. Alice, comments, and then I'll take questions. No, um, okay. no. David, David. Um, I uh, at, at another committee meeting, uh, another town committee meeting, um, one of the uh, the rec recreation di director um, mentioned on uh, and, and reported on uh, some discussions he'd had with the town manager um, with, uh, plans to. Um, do exactly what you're saying. Um, have the the top floor uh, become the recreation department mm -hmm. department, and the bottom floor become the French Mascone Food Bank, mm -hmm. um, and to hire um, one or two more recreation department employees. Um, is that really part of the plan? <laughs> there was no plan. <laughs> There's, yeah. it, there has been discussion about possibly using that for recreation, possibly mm -hmm. using it for the downtown. Um, mm -hmm. We have no plans and have not discussed plans of hiring more, but we did say as recreation grows, there may possibly be a need for that in the future. So mm -hmm. it's not a recreation plan, if you will. It's just some some forethought mm -hmm. if things decided to grow, what could be used and what that building could possibly be used for. Mm -hmm. We've also talked about relocating other possible departments to there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's been a lot of things talked mm -hmm. about. There's no set plan at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the things I've always wondered is we have human services here. And if you are a person who's truly, you know, struggling and you may not have a vehicle, how do you get here? Now, I know we have a very nice town. I know our folks go out, but right now, you know, we have some staff in and out um, for very good reasons. And I think that just being central for some of those kind of items wouldn't be harmful. Yeah, the problem with that is if we move and our, we're home, using our services down there, we'd have to hire a new person. Right now, we do use that meeting space and other yeah. meeting space we have to accommodate people that may not be able to come out this way. Yeah. But since we do, I mean, in an effort to save the town money, we merge a few positions together and mm -hmm. the administrative assistant here happens to be the person that works. On, I, I think the only decision at this time is a clear decision. I think I'm hearing mm -hmm. not to sell the building, yep. to consider it part of the town owned campus, if you will, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maintain it in its minimal standard following July. Uh, once the police department moves out and not you and that's it for now not like I know I mentioned storage but not do what they did with Shet Street where they fill it back up with stuff. oh no like if you need to <laughs> decide that you're going to temporarily store something that's one thing but there's a tendency yeah. in this area we're New Englanders if it's got a roof <laughs> over it we stuff it right and that's like a uh, general New Englander yeah. well, there may, <laughs> right there there may be some things we're already seeing that with Whitney Hall where to vacate Depot Street and Union Street, we may need to put some stuff there that we don't necessarily know is going to have a long-term home in the new public safety building, but it's a place to store it in the short term while we make that decision. So I do think for most of 2025, that space will probably yeah. be. I, I think the only thing for. in terms of progress would be a conversation um, with the food bank to see whether there is an interest in perhaps using some of that ground level space. All right, I'm going to go ahead, Brad. Brad Rich, um, I mean, the board's going to do what the board wants to do, and I, I, I totally get that. It just seems to me with two brand new buildings in town with lots of available conference space, I think it, it's prudent that you take this piece of property and you put it back on the tax rolls and you sell it. Mm -hmm. you, you've got two brand new buildings, very large. This is going to, this building here is going to open up with less meetings. I really think for from the taxpayer's point of view, you need to sell it and put it back on the tax rolls. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I guess my comment is, um, 
that we should let's see how um i don't think we should be using it for storage or other just mm -hmm. because of the vacuum is mm -hmm. not a reason to fill it and that's uh either from you know people or other things i think the idea of of, of getting uh the town manager to provide sort of a some visioning and, and recommendations is good um one of the things that you know one of the compromises we had to make as we were sort of fitting Whitney hall to the budget that it had after you know it had been approved was our right, planning the planning department is not down at the new uh whitney hall mm -hmm. that's a potential use that i'd like to see downtown um but i think we should consider all options at this point we should not do things that um would sort of prevent things from happening in the future. And and I, I don't think we need more meeting space once the two new buildings are built. I don't think we need, um, you know, if, if we don't have enough record space in the existing buildings, we should really look at getting rid of the records. <laughs> we yeah. have we now have the space to maintain the records that are legally mandated. Um, so I don't think it should be used for, you know, uses like that. That's not, not a good use. Um, and the last thing I have to say is, um, so I think I think in general, what we've heard from the board tonight is let's do some planning around it. Let's not do any work on it. Let's not take on expenses, but let's, let's do some thoughtful planning around it. Um, and we have some time to do that. Um, would that be fair to say from folks? Yes. I also think that we should at least determine mm -hmm. whether it is feasible to sell that building. Okay. Yeah. I think that's about Does it have enough land? Does it have that potential parking? If the answer to those questions is no. Okay then we're stuck with it. We, I don't think it's a great piece of architecture. Yeah. I do not think it's particularly well built. And, you know, if we can sell it, let's sell it. I think that's a fair question to answer in the planning process of what, right. what would be involved in subdividing that property in a way that made it mm -hmm. feasible. So, okay. so I think that's a fair thing to yeah. investigate. Who are here's I'm gonna throw a wrench out there. Are we allowed to sell it? Because we've run into this many times in this town where things are gifted for a specific purpose. And if like we can't we can just sell Whitney Hall, right? We can't sell part of Hughes Park. So that was Julio's place. How did we acquire it? And are we even allowed to well, that would be part of answering John's yeah. question? Yep. Right. Um but I do think that that's something that we need to, mm -hmm. I think that's part of the vision process. I guess the, the next thing I'd suggest to help guide Ed, mm -hmm. with two of the properties, um, with Deep Bush Street and Union Street, we have a clear direction, and we also have sort of a clear time frame. Of those properties should be vacated next summer. Um, while, so I would suggest that those are the a higher priority than answering all of the questions right. around, yeah. the, Absolutely. around the police station, um, so again, it says, sort of, unless somebody feels differently. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I couldn't see you behind Alice. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, so, so from a priority standpoint, I would prioritize the two that were clear we're going to sell and um, make the, the police station sort of the third mm -hmm. on that priority list. Absolutely. All right, go ahead, sir. Um, there's, you have some buildings that have potential in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this um, Sharon Buffet from Enfield and people don't know me. Um, you have you have several buildings that have potent, um, a variety of potential. I wonder about talking to a real estate agent about, think about what was possible across from George's for mm -hmm. apartments. Mm -hmm. um, I think those apartments are way too small, they're postage stamp, but that's an aside. I think if you look at the master plan, it's very spelled out very clearly about envisioning Enfield as a place with downtown housing that people can walk to shops. You know, there's a whole nice description in there. Mm -hmm. And if you sell up the few buildings or building spaces that you have that don't have a focus on housing, you're going to kind of completely lose any potential for that because you've also talked about the limited amount of space available for infill housing where they can be on the sewer line in downtown Enfield. Mm -hmm. um, even some, nobody's addressing workforce housing, nobody's addressing senior housing. Um, so that would be the direction that I would hope that 
you guys would look at very seriously. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have um, sure. one last comment, not to make a big deal out of it, but when the police station is not in use anymore, not in a major way, but can we still keep it like nice looking? Because the Consolidated mm -hmm. Communications Building has like a very unkempt, can you speak abandoned, up? grim feeling to it. And I don't want that to like encroach on a disused police station. Yes, we will have to continue to maintain the building for as long as we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Any other comments for Ed as he digests everything we've just said? <laughs> You've got this. Nobody knows. It's complicated. And that's all right. That's why we're talking about it nine months before yeah. uh, anything has to happen. Uh, all right. That was a good good initial discussion on that. Um, all right. So we will move on. We have a resignation from the Heritage Commission from Madeline Johnson. I would move we accept Madeline Johnson's resignation from the Heritage Commission with regret and thanks for her service. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, that's a lost to town. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that uh, yeah. So that ends our the business section. Uh, do we have? Uh, oh yes. Um, before we're now moving. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do this. Is a good time actually for this as well. Um, Lindsay, so we had an electrical action last Tuesday and it went very well. So thank you to everybody who came and voted, and a special thanks to all the volunteers. And Lindsay asked for us to uh, very. To thank Georges, Jakes, and Gasanos, they donated food for all the volunteers. Um, so those three local businesses treated us very well. And we had an excellent breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> and we would like to thank them uh, for providing that on election day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you to Georges, Jakes, and Gasanos. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys you. like to send them a letter? Yeah, that's that'd great. Be, that'd, that'd be nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd that if you didn't just give us lunch, this is something that's part of the budget. If yeah. If it's not donated, this yeah. comes out of our budget. And the numbers so. coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and feeding yeah. people who are doing work for you is always well, it was very nice of them. Very it was. Yeah. Respect. Excellent. Yeah. Some of the good options. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so next on the agenda is public comments. Any comments from the public this evening? Go, John. Sure. John Esler, Enfield. Why not I pick it off? It's all about the shift. Mm -hmm. The septic rule. Uh, I want to begin with the beginning of the septic rule, the introduction, the, the basis for it is this RSA. It talks about your health officer and his judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, he can identify underwater, let's see, subsurface systems that are mm -hmm. a nuisance or injurious to public health. Mm -hmm. That's the basis for writing this rule. Mm -hmm. Now, has the Board of Health, have you folks identified any? Septic system that are a nuisance or injurious to public health. So I'm going to make two things. Uh, Pardon me. So, so two, so two, two things. Well, this is a, this is a time for public comment for us to listen. The the public hearing on the proposed septic rule will be at our next meeting on October seventh. Uh, but the short answer to your question is yes. There have been septics in town that have been being public hazards, and the town has worked with those property owners to rectify that situation. Okay. And have you been, in other words, you're not going to really answer questions that I ask you. Correct. The, the, well, we'll do the, we'll do our best. But what I'm saying is that this is the, that the this is a time for public comment, not necessarily a huge back and forth. I just want to preface it with that because um, anyway. So go ahead. Okay, I'll make yeah, because because we're really trying to listen to you to what people have to say and to you know sure. interpret that in this this part. Well, you know, I have a problem in a way because we've had some public comment and each time we do, the rule comes out to be stiffer than it was before. So I'm almost afraid we found this. <laughs> uh, however, I wish you yeah. folks could have been with me. I've been ringing doorbells, as you probably know, <laughs> in Spec Pond and Mass Goma, Crystal Lake. And it's embarrassing to see all these folks out here, nice folks, who don't know anything about what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a 
seems like backdoor politics. You can try and mm -hmm. pass this without good public collaboration, mm -hmm. which is what you should have if you're going to develop a rule. Mm -hmm. Rather than, as I know, this rule was developed by a couple of uh, concerned guys on our lanes who couldn't do anything about cyanobacter, mm -hmm. so they decided to go for low-hanging fruit and write a septic rule. Uh, rather than writing a septic rule, rather than going to the Sunday, which they did, by the way, and looking at their rule, which is really a good rule. Sunday is quite an organization that drinks their water. Their rule says clearly you must pump your septic system every three years with a waiver for up to six years. Mm -hmm. There's no more weasel words in there. So, But unfortunately, when writing this rule, it kept going on and on, but the key was to get to inspection. Mm -hmm. Now, in all these lakes, we've got residences that are 50, 60, 70 years old. They probably started with dry wells and God knows what. Likely, their systems are not going to meet today's standards, but they're perfectly acceptable for the use that they are undergoing today. Mm -hmm. They're not harming the lake in any measurable way. Mm -hmm. And I wish that that was taken into account before you came on this onerous rule. Mm -hmm. But I had a couple of questions. Uh, some of the changes that took place, like the holding tanks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize, but in the holding tank now, uh, they must be pumped once a year. It used to be pumped at 80%. Okay, that was the standard. Now it has to be pumped regularly, quarterly. Reg pumped regularly, I think, and inspected quarterly. Mm -hmm. And who the heck, these are for people generally with summer residences. Who's going to go out there in December and dig up their tank just to say, hi, I inspected it? I think that's a crazy addition <laughs> to the rule. I'm not sure how that's relevant to the rule. We'll go ahead, Ed. Yeah, that, that's state law, quarterly, yeah. that they have to be pumped. That's not us. Okay. But inspected? It's a state the law that part. they need to be pumped quarterly and put out, but they should be inspected on a regular basis. I have not seen that in state uh, rule, by, by the way. It is in the state. I, I read it. Just, um, okay, that's, but anyhow, that's, that's a ridiculous thing for us to put in our rule. If the state so has a, it. So well, that's <laughs> not in our rule. There, there's nothing in our rule that requires pumping quarterly. No, it requires inspecting quarterly, I believe. No. no. It says holding tanks to be pumped. We gotta be pretty careful, careful about pumping. spreading misinformation. Yeah, this is scary. And be submitted to them on a quarterly basis. That's because, and that's because of the state. She submitted quarterly. Okay, I thought that was inspected quarterly. I didn't know what the receipt would be for. No, and that's direct wording from state law. Right, we didn't write that. I have a question. You were much better off before. Go ahead, uh, Joanne Gradich and uh, Crystal Lake. How do you submit something quarterly if it's not inspected? I mean, what what are you expecting us to provide? Especially if you're not there. Especially if you're here. Right. So if you, yeah, state law states that right. that you have to have it pumped quarterly and you have to submit the receipts and stuff showing mm -hmm. that you did it. That's DES law right now. Yeah. Why does Sonopi not have that? It's the state. state it's not why, is Sonopi not, why don't we do Sonopi's rule, guys? Have people live in this So is it, fair, is it fair to say that your comment is that you'd like to see Sonopi's yeah, rule, not the rule that we've proposed? Is that a fair sort of assessment yeah, of what you're Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 So let's try another one. This is public hearing information. This is yeah, exactly right. the public yeah, hearing. I was right. just going to say, right. this is the not the public appropriate public. venue for this discussion. <laughs> you need to come to the public hearing. This is not what we have prepared for yeah. for tonight, well, which is which is important. But we will listen to public comments. But but again, this is this is you know we're going to do our best. But this is not sort of the question and answer time. So, so yes, please go ahead and finish your comment. I have been on six <laughs> times on my computer <clears throat> looking for this New Hampshire licensed septic system evaluator, mm -hmm. and you say that they're on there. Mm -hmm. I come to a site. Mm -hmm. But I can't find anybody listed that I can contact. Who's true? How am I? Uh, it's, it's really I easy. We can better the link. Check it. So no, so, he's quite right. So so I will suggest who should who should we put her in touch with to try to send a link? So yeah, we can I, get her. I, will make sure I believe it's on the website, but we'll yeah. double it's check. It's not. I'll double uh, check and make sure it's up there tomorrow. Perfect. So we'll double check, make sure the link's on the town website, and then you can call the town office. Mm -hmm. 
and they'll send you the link if, if you can't find it yourself. Eric, every license in the state of New Hampshire, be it lawyer, be it realtor, be it the subject one, they're all on the state website and they're all in one. I understand one. that, but I also understand that it can be difficult. Oh yeah, to no, I'm just saying it's all there. So make it so right. Yep. And nothing. There's no list yep. of anybody. Yeah. So 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 yeah. Contact someone at the town office tomorrow, and they'll help you find the link for that. So that'll help. And my other question is, is this going to be a basic inspection that you would require or a full inspection? This is it's going to require a licensed inspector to say that the system is adequate and performing the way it is. There's, we're, we're not we're not going to get into defining what the inspection is. Mm -hmm. We're dealing that licensed professionals determine whether the system mm -hmm. can receive its certification or not. That's on on that. Uh, do, you, do you have specific comments for the for the board, or, or would well, you like to move to vote? I mean, you you want us to. Mm -hmm. You don't want us to make a decision, no. but it would help to be able to find these people, to be able to contact them, mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. ask questions of them, mm -hmm. so that <clears throat> when we come the next time, yeah. we'll uh, I will understand. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, no, I, I understand. It can be hard to find that stuff. So some of the will help. So, Betty, right, go ahead. Like the, I would like to just drop these with you guys, but I'll tell you essentially what they yeah. are. Today, I just briefly looked up and Googled, how often should you be pumping your septic tank? And I have four of these. I don't mm -hmm. know how many I need to make for you guys, but one is from um, San Diego County mm -hmm. in California. They, we all know that California has very stringent, uh, you know, rules regarding their, you know, <laughs> their health and their stuff. The next one is from Rota Ruta, and so I thought, oh, who but a company who would want to pump your septic tank a lot to make money would have a chart, and they, sure enough, they had a chart. And the last one is from, um, sorry, it's called. I have those sites on these. Inspect a inspectopedia.com. And the thing is that all of these sites had pretty much the same information, which I thought was amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, me being one person in my house, and that's all that there are going to be. Mm -hmm. My kids all have their homes elsewhere. They don't really visit, maybe two days a year. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, given that I have a 1,500-gallon tank, and I'm one person, one occupant, mm -hmm. It says 19 years, but I just want you to know that yeah. these can I approach yeah, the absolutely. bench? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. This is absolutely appropriate. This is thank you. And I have the sites written at the top, and okay. these are all like 22 mm -hmm. to 24, like you know, 2020 to 24. Mm -hmm. written, written. I will write down the sites. Right. And say I can if you want to just get it to them in email. I don't do paper anyway, so. Okay. I don't know if you want to look. Uh, uh, you haven't come in here. Go ahead. Karen, come here. Yeah. Um, I it away. In regard to the holding tank, if um, you know they're saying about submitting um, paperwork on a daily basis, is could that be part of something that falls under the exemption that you can apply for the exemption? Unfortunately, no, because that's state law. I think that's where it was written in the rule okay. that this is an exemption to the rest of the rule that we're looking at doing. And right. the exemption was there because this is already state law. That's more stringent than right. what we were doing. So we, we can't, can't so, so it, no. anything. Yeah, we can't we can't do less than the state mandates. No. But I meant like say I have a cottage that has a holding tank and I do a yearly basis. I'm and no one's there. Yeah. I mean I've only had people there two months yeah no unfortunately because this one's state law we don't have control over it yeah you have to deal with the state on that well, why didn't some of you have to deal with it they do they, well, they, they simply didn't write they it didn't they didn't include that. that as part of their ordinance which in many ways you know educates they didn't include that as as one of the right. one of the things and i would but say they do. put it in there as an exception it's not us mandating it it's right. an exception to our rule because it already needs to be done right so technically, the way Sunapis did it, they would have to follow Sunapis rules, even though they have a sun holding tank. Where this one exempts holding tanks from our rule what based on this rule. Just educate me. What happens in the winter time? That's the state. That's the state question. Yeah, we aren't the state. 
knowing in my knowhood someone's going to so, come out in the winter so, time and, and check the system. So with, with regard to this rule, though, that right, that's an exception. Okay. So this rule won't apply to people with holding tanks because they already have a stricter rule under the state law. Mm -hmm. Right. Except for being inspected every third year. Right. Yeah, okay. To make sure okay. that they're not cracked in those tanks. Right. right. It sounds like you guys have holding tanks and maybe some of that's to your concern. And so you could get some information from the state to help you out. Right. Um, we have a comment online. Bob I can't Cusick. quite read it from Bob here. Cusick. Okay, Bob Cusick. Hey, uh, guys, um, you know, as I listen to this, I find it kind of, I guess, funny that we're arguing about something that benefits all of us around the lake. I think what what we have to consider is a couple things. One, pumping your, your holding tank and then pumping, if you have a pump-up tank where your pump is and you have an upper septic field, that'll keep your uh, field and your the quality of your tank and everything in, in really good working condition. And I, I just, I, I'm really befuddled that we're all looking all over the place to find all these rules. Uh, and it really seems to me that best practices, at least from what I see in New Hampshire and in Vermont and whatever is three years. Uh, you know, the the tanks need pumped in order to maintain the quality of your field to avoid what happened last year whenever we had the, you know, all the water and all the issues. So I, I think we should just all sit back and decide to do this in a kind of cooperative effort and where there are issues, uh, let let the town sort them out with the people. But arguing about is it three years, is it five years, is it ten years? Um, I I think it's kind of silly because best practices dictate three years, and I think we should go with three years. That's all I got to say. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, and I'd like to. Uh comment in reply i think that um as mr essler pointed out you know we are a bit surprised that so few residents of enfield round the lake seem to be aware of, of this um it, it would be helpful i think um and i don't think i don't i don't see people as arguing I see people as trying to understand the basis for uh, the practices and the frequency and uh, the kinds of um, requirements that are being imposed. What sense does that make? Where does this come from? I think we all were not given an opportunity to understand, mm -hmm. you know, where really was the data and the expertise that developed this. I mean, we did see, we heard some presentations, parts that yes, in New Hampshire, septic systems have, um, you know, in the history based on certain time frames, have contributed some percentage of, mm -hmm. um, you know, phosphate and troubling uh, runoff the lakes. But we haven't, as Mr. Essler, what, just pointed out, I mean, we haven't we haven't seen as a basis that there's evidence of septic um, toxicity in mm -hmm. our particular lakes in Crystal or Mascoma or Spectacle um, or I guess that's it. That covered it. Yeah. So, so I think it's quite reasonable, uh, the kind of conversation that we're trying to have. And I also think it's noteworthy, and I appreciate your willingness to listen to these comments tonight, even though um, it initially took, I think, some folks aback because this is not the scheduled public hearing. But it's, but it's, um, it should be noted that the public hearing is planned and then the vote and decision making as I understand it, is planned immediately following public comments, right? That that's the night the board 
make some final decisions. And if that's the case, then where would the opportunity be for Lake residents to raise questions, raise suggestions, and and you all have any opportunity for that to percolate with you, you know, for you to take it and consider. If we're having a hearing and then you're doing a vote immediately, I I simply comment that um, it just seems like the process has not. Mm -hmm. Whether, and I'm not suggesting that it's the fault of anyone, but it's been kind of rather private process arriving at all of this and then um, hitting some of us and then a lot of people just being unaware. It just it happened rather quickly that, that, that this, okay. this uh, developed quite precipitously from the first time we were aware of a conversation about concern about cyanobacteria in the lake and um, we, many of us express concern about runoff, yeah. the massive runoff, the pollution, the logs, the debris floating down the lake from the rushing uh, creeks and just simple runoff, um, a host of other factors. And then, bam, suddenly within, whoa, what is it, three weeks, boom, bam, boom, boom, boom. we have the so, most restrictive um, septic system policy, which which you present as being based on Sunapee's model. That was the introduction. And now as we read more, we go, what? So, uh, what? So, Sunapee's model? This is just far more restrictive. So I yeah. am just trying to share with you, hoping you can yeah. empathize I, with I, no, I appreciate your comment. Thank the you. resident experience. I, we're missing a name. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. She never gave her name. Uh, oh, so uh, I can do that. Yeah, Brenda yeah. Eastman. Okay. And so, so it's been on our agenda probably four times in the last four months. So this this has been um, a four and a half month process so far from when it was first, uh, when the very first draft was brought. Um, and just as a, as, as a point of sort of exactly how it can work, the board can make a decision immediately following the hunt hearing, but we're not required to. We, we can make any decision we want at that point. Um, but you're correct. It is likely that some decision one way or another will be made, but it's not required and it's not obligated at all. Uh, David, you come again. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you were uh, here um, at the first meeting where this that I heard about this came up. Uh, several months, you say four um, yeah. ago, but this room was packed. Every seat here was filled. There was people out in the hallway yeah. and um, there was lots of discussion about this. Um, frankly, there was not much of the the the, the negative, much of any of the, the negative side that you bring forth um, uh, at that time. Um, I think it's a matter of turning people out for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. I, and, a, and an active discussion. And if I can make a comment, because the content of that meeting that was packed was about concern about the Sorry. cyanobacteria outbreak on Crystal Lake a year ago, not mm -hmm. nothing this year. And the whole focus was the group asking for uh, help with watershed protective measures. That was that was the majority of this conversation, and and it was not a conversation about septic. Yeah, the gentleman in the back. I don't think you've spoken yet. Yeah, a couple of quick comments. I think it's unfortunate that your hearing is on October seventh because there's a substantial percentage of the lake communities that aren't here in October. We have your name, Pardon? minute taker. Your name, name perfect. Uh, secondly, I, I've talked briefly with a couple of professionals in, in the area because we're in the process of, of attempting to replace old old systems with new mm -hmm. systems, and they don't agree on whether what we have is a holding tank or not, which mm -hmm. I find interesting because both these guys do this for a living, yet they disagree. Um, so there's certainly that kind of adds to the confusion. And Thirdly, and lastly, for me anyway, I don't think there's anybody here that, that that opposes having a regulation that deals with septic systems. What they're objecting to is this one seems 
more onerous than necessary, especially for part-time Blake employees who, who may have one person in a house uh, three months a year and requiring automatic testing uh, as frequently as you are with the penalties that, that you're talking about seems overly onerous. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate that. Well, Go ahead, John. Well, Gary, did you want to go? Yeah, I, oh. um, I'm just wondering, you know, this is going to be quite a financial impact mm -hmm. on probably people that don't have the law on uh, the lot size mm -hmm. for a new septic system. And I'm wondering if the board has been proactive in trying to find um, grants or cost share programs for um, individuals. You know, as far as imposing this on, you know, just for offering. Yeah, I can discuss that. There are grant, there are grant opportunities through USDA. There's some grant opportunities through the state, different funding mechanisms for people that have failed septic systems, whether they're on the lake or not on the lake. And, you know, we're working through some of those right now with people. We, we work with them um, to jump a little bit to the fines you talked about. Um, again, that was taken strictly state, straight out of state law, the up to a thousand. But, you know, we're, again, we're working with someone that's had a failed system for a little while. And as long as we see progress and people are working on trying to get things done in a timely manner, there's not gonna be any sort of fine. Um, we're not in the business of fining people just to collect money. It's more to get the septic system Fix so we're not polluting our legs. Have you, oh, I can have you thought of um, grandfathering in because of um, the financial? No, no, it's opposite. absolutely not. Opposite, completely. No, opposite. I meant that goes with, totally with, against the no, whole no, point no, of it. No, no, it would. It yes. Would. Yes, but I'm just talking about those people that don't have the lot size to put in mm -hmm. septic system. I'm just, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just saying. You're making the comment. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying with a grandfather with mm -hmm. certain um, guidelines, like pumping the um, holding tank, you, you know, like what you're saying yeah. for the That's holding tank to be pumped, you know, with certain exceptions. <laughs> Although I've been talking to some people one of them's right next to me here who have put in septic systems on small lots. Apparently, these days you can put in a very valid and functional septic system under a driveway. Uh, okay. Really? How much money? Uh, I, I, I'm gonna, that I don't know. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, give or take 40,000. Hey, generation. That, that's unfair to throw a number something like that. Time out. Yeah. Time out. Public comment, but not. We don't I will also say. say just to address that issue that's being spread around town, holding tanks, small septic systems and things in the DES law says they will be approved to maintain the current use of the thing of the lot. So they're not going to kick you out of your house because your septic system went. DES will help you find a way to stay in your house. Would you say maybe there's some that? maybe there's some expense to it? You know, they even said that they would reapprove holding tanks to keep houses being occupied. Who is and that? that's that's the ES yes. in their septic rule. So you need to read that. It's long. <laughs> it's in there. There's a lot to read. I guess I haven't read it all. Yeah. But, so as we're getting to folks for some multiple times, so John, do you want to make a final uh, public comment this evening? John, behind you, has been raising his hand a couple times, as, as I've been trying to get you. No, we've got several people who'd like to speak a second time, but uh, I'd like to give people an opportunity to make their public comments, but so go ahead. Yep. Me, okay. Yep. Uh, interesting comment. This is really what should have been going on as we developed it. But by the way, I did have read a lot of the mm -hmm. RSAs, especially the ones now that are attached to this new rule. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. One of the RSAs to the penalty Cites a ten thousand dollar a day fine, and another one that talks about the thousand dollar a day fine. These things kind of get people riled up, and mm -hmm. again, somehow somebody has lived a happy life without that in there. Mm -hmm. And I think our community would be much happier mm -hmm. with the Sunapi rule instead of riling us up like this. And mm -hmm. we know we're facing ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for these residential uses, these you know summertime uses. But I, uh, another question from the Board of Health. Uh, comment for you. Mm -hmm. If a person has a four-bedroom house 
and a septic system designed for a four bedroom house. And I'll just say the leach field, for example, instead of pipes has four tubes in the leach field. Now an inspector comes out and inspects these, this tank and leach field and tank number four is collapsed. The inspector will probably write some kind of report to the town. I wish our rule would say to what part of the town, but to the town. How does the town react to that? Does it then say you must fix this pipe? What do you think, folks? Would it'll, you say that so or to help? It'll be based on what the inspector says. The inspector he, said the tank that that if he says that needs to be replaced for it to function properly, then absolutely we would work with you to get that replaced. If he says under the current uses and things that do, the three pipes are working, but we recommend you do that, then we're we're not going to force you to. The you need to look at those reports. So you look at those reports are not pass fail. They're these are what you need to do to make your system work right, unless your system is in complete failure. So you're going to allow the inspector to make recommendations on how to fix the field to meet today's usage. Is that what it, you said? To, to be based on what you're approved to have and that your system is functioning properly as designed. For the usage. That's all I'm saying. We've got they have one apartment being used in a four apartment house. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue with you. They have they requirements are. set by the state of New right. Hampshire of what they need to look for, and they're not gonna put their license on the line for anybody. They're this gonna say, here's what needs to happen, yeah. Yeah. and we're right. gonna follow that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so well, I'm happy to listen to comments, but we're going to stop the questions back and forth. So if you have comments that you'd like us to listen to, we'll listen because I'm a believer in that. Um, but but we can stop. so sorry, go ahead. I have a comment. Yes. And and my hand went up the minute Ed you yeah. spoke. <laughs> and I don't know if you saw my hand go like whoa, but it did. But like that. So what you said, I just want to tell you, I think for everybody, our blood pressure lowered because when you said. So if you get a bad thing, we're not going to like start fining you a thousand dollars a day and a thousand dollars a day and a thousand because you're not there, but you're making a good faith effort to get somebody there. Yes. What I would love to see is that wording put into the document, because the way that the document reads for those of us that are like reading it with eyes popping out mm -hmm. is that, oh, my God. My neighbor who came for two weeks, scheduled her, uh, you know, septic tank that, you know, and they couldn't come when he was there. So she says to me, <laughs> it doesn't happen, but says to me, hey, listen, Betts, can you go over to my house when the septic guy is here? And I say, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then she finds out something's wrong with it. Now it's winter. How the heck, when she lives in Chicago, does she show up to do anything mm -hmm. and she's imagining a thousand dollars a day accruing for nine months? Mm -hmm. So when you just said, we're going to make every effort to work with you, that is completely different to the way that your document reads. And I would love something in there that just lowers the blood pressure for everybody. I think that was amazing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any final public comment? Just to follow up on the comment that it's, you know, it's very nice. It's so nice to hear the empathy and assurances for the individual situations. However, you know, personnel change, board membership potentially could change. And if this is what is written as the rule, will be the written rule. So you know, very the conversation is appreciated, but unless it's unless some of these points are written, they really do not necessarily pertain. Thank you for coming. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Any other business to come before the board this evening? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Public hearing.